I don't know. Um, I think to answer my my opinion on on the early um, the grand growth and the uh, we uh, you would expect yes a big canopy to to be prone to water stress. I didn't see a lot of that yet last year. Um, we had the same we had the problem almost universally that we had trouble getting the moisture out of the ground. Um, you know, I think so. We didn't really see water stress occur. In some cases, yes, but most cases it was it was more it was later than we ideally wanted it. Which ideally we want to get our water stress dialed in before raison a couple two or three weeks before that. Uh, some cases we did, but a lot, of, especially with the with the uh, drier soils or the more rocky, coarse soils. Um, so yes, we had heat last year, and that's what I'm going to talk about uh, and the effects of the heat. Um, so I'm going to kind of review this really quickly because Thibaut and, and Rob already went through this. I just wanted to show uh, heat summations, which I missed, uh, 2017 is uh, not there, but sometimes things get messed up in translation, I guess, between the, uh, the programs. But um, the 2017 is the right one, the wrong one, the red. You know, was it, it was definitely warmer in, in obviously in some months than others. But overall, um, <laughs> the, uh, what you're not seeing there is 2017 had about, I think, 3,050 de heat uh, degree days at this particular vineyard. This is Chalk Hill, a Chalk Hill site. So it wasn't that much different than, than the previous years, obviously uh, uh, much warmer than 16, but not that much different than 15. Uh, but what really made it different wasn't, wasn't the overall heat, it was the, it was the uh, events. Uh, and these were already pointed out, again, by Rob, exactly, and the, the arrows got shifted, uh, apparently. But but you remember all the heats, the heat events that uh, Rob talked about, and the one that in particular that was really uh, telling and the, probably defined the whole vintage was the one over on uh, the Labor Day um, heat event. Uh, and again, though, uh, to reiterate what what Tebow said, VPD is very was very important this year uh, than other years, and of course the the VPD w climbed extremely high on all those days of the heat. Much more than in previous years, as you can see all the noise below it, but the ones that, that poke out are all 2017. Um, back in June, back in, um, in August, and the big one in September. The thing is, the weird thing is, and this, is, uh, this isn't shown here in my slides, uh, we've been finding some warmer, or some uh, not warmer, some higher humidities in our measurements. When we're taking our, our parameter measurements, we, we also um, note humidity. And uh, humidities in general, uh, day, day in, day out, have been higher, and we've had to change actually the configuration of our parameters to, uh, through, to uh, accommodate the higher humidities, which is strange. But at the same time, these, these events seem to be extremely dry. So I, I'm, my thoughts were on the early season of uh, events, the heat events in June, and in early July, the pre raisin um, uh, uh, heat events, I didn't see that much detrimental, immediate detrimental effects. In fact, I think it might have induced a little bit of stress that we weren't getting with the water um, because we do want some stress. We want to elevate some uh, uh, ABA and the psychic acid in, in the vine to stimulate some of the ripening uh, machinery, some of the ripening enzymes in the fruit prior, prior to Verazon. And I think that may have had a little bit of a stimulating effect. Uh, I was, I'm pleasantly surprised to hear by a lot of winemakers saying that, that the wines are actually turned out pretty well. And maybe this has something to do with it. Maybe it didn't. But I didn't see any immediate uh, problems. I didn't see any canopy uh, leaf, leaf burn. I didn't see any fruit uh, damaged by the early heat events. The post raisin uh, heat events were, were definitely uh, detrimental, and we've seen that. Uh, you know that. I don't need to tell you that, but uh, I think it's important to look at some of these and maybe what what's, we could have done to uh, mitigate those uh, negative consequences. So I, 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 this, is a diff this is a different weather station. I, I did this when I was too lazy to do this again with the, uh, set I had, the data set I had from... Uh, Chalk Hill. Um, so I use this. I had this already set up. I um, this is one, an article I wrote for, um, again, for an article I wrote for Wine Business Monthly that, that I put this chart in. Uh, the uh, September first. This is the diurnal. So this is by time, and this is uh, air temperature. And so you can see uh, uh, September first. The, the blue one is actually August twenty uh, second. I think it was. It's not showing up in the in the legend. But that's, that's what I call a nice warm day. You got it about, about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. But on um, September 1st, it got up to uh, about 112 or 113. 
But what really was important, I think, was not just the heat, but was the VPD. Um, and that's what this is. This is diurnal VPD, so vapor pressure deficit over time. Like this is Eastern Napa, so it's different, a little different than Sonoma, but that's still the same idea. Um, you can see the difference between August 22nd, that blue line, and September 1st, just a, you know, a week or two later, a couple weeks later. The difference in VPD, not just temperature, now how important that, that is, I think it's very important because let's look at estimated a berry transpiration. So berries transpire, they don't have any stomata, active stomata after a couple of weeks, so they are pretty much dependent on the environment, on how, on how their water balance is, uh, is maintained or not maintained. In this case, uh, not very well. So I got this, uh, I estimated this from an equation from, uh, <laughs> it's not showing up, from Keller, uh, a paper from, I uh, uh, can't remember the, Zhang and, and Keller, I believe, but I can't remember the actual name. It's, it was on here to help me, but I can't see it now. Um, they, they came out with a, a relationship between VPD and berry transpiration. So really nice to have that. And I used that same equation uh, or derived the same equation from their chart to get this. And this is a, just an illustration. Again, August 22nd is the blue line. September 1st is the, is the orange line. And this is the VPD over time, the diurnal vapor, or, I'm sorry, the transpiration over time in grams per, grams per um, sorry, milligrams per berry per hour. And obviously the, there's a huge difference between the two days, uh, a warm day, a very warm day, and, and an extremely hot day. Um, if you, if you, yeah, if you, if you look at that, uh, the, if you sum up or essentially take the integral underneath that curve, the area underneath those curves, you get the amount of water transpired per day. Again, this is estimated. The dry day, the very extreme day, was 168 grams. That's a lot. Um, seems really high. <laughs> uh, wh whereas the other one was 38 on the, on, on the less hot day, 38 grams. Now, now that, that water is replaced through the phloem primarily. Uh, the water is replaced within the plant through the phloem. Can the can the vine supply 138 grams of water? Uh, that's still astounding amount of water, if that's even right, uh, or 100, 168 grams uh, throughout the day. I, I doubt it. And so what we see is is berry shrivel. Uh, there's a lot of discussion on how could we have reduced the berry shrivel. So. As I mentioned, the berries are, are, are fed by the phloem after veraison, not, not by the xylem. There is some xylem backflow that can occur, especially when it's really dry, uh, and that probably did occur in this case. But transpiration is the primary wa water loss component of the, of the berry at this, po at this point in time. So irrigation may have mitigated the shrivel, but um, really I think it's more a matter of exposure. So fruit that's exposed, uh, is going to experience that VPD in all its glory. Ones that are that are less exposed, like on the backs of, backs of the clusters, or you know, or with some leaf cover, um, had much less shrivel. And so I, I do believe that irrigation had a component that some vineyards that were irrigated prior to the heat wave, uh, per, maybe per, perhaps even in excess, were had less less of the shrivel, but um, they still got shriveled. Uh, and I and I think that. And I think it, I think we, I think personally, I need to be less worried about a little extra irrigation at, at this point in the, in the, in the ripening period. Um, like we have a tendency just to really, really minimize the amount of water we put on. And I think there's a couple of situations where I probably could have mitigated this a little better uh, personally than I did last year. But, but on the other hand, I think it was a really a matter of exposure. And I think that's something we have to rethink as far as far as how much exposure we have our, our fruit uh, in the canopy. And so we have to think about row orientation when we plant a vineyard. Uh, that's super important. Are the fruit is the fruit shaded uh, at three and four in the afternoon when it's when it's the hottest and driest, uh, or is it in broad sunlight? Um, the VSP canopy, I think Rob mentioned, didn't do very well. Uh, should we be planting everything in VSP um, or leaf pulling? I didn't write, write down here, but leaf pulling, uh, you know, stripping the canopy uh, bare even on even on one side may not be the way we want to go. We started doing some tunneling doing the interior leaves instead of the exterior leaves. That's very expensive because it's hard to train somebody to do that. And you can't use a machine to pull interior leaves, at least not yet. I'd love to see that. But I think those kind of canopies, uh, those, that kind of canopy management fared a lot better. This is a, some pictures I took uh, middle of September after the heat wave. Um, 
of a vineyard that that fared very well. And I know some of you might recognize this one. At least one person in the audience will. Um, it's a divided canopy, and it's if you you just notice that you can't picture it doesn't show up very well. But uh, there's a nice amount of shade on the fruit. Well, while the fruit is actually fairly well exposed. Otherwise, you can see the, all the clusters. You just have to duck a little bit underneath the the, the, the umbrella of canopy. Uh, and it, we had very little shrivel in that block. I mean, we didn't change the irrigation regime at all in that particular vineyard. The other things that can happen, it's not just the fruit, it's also the leaves. And I, I believe that that had a lot to do with what happened late in the season is, um, you know, the, the heat uh, can damage the leaves. And we had some scorching, but I didn't see a lot of scorch that this year. I think a lot of it was more subtle than that. A lot of the, there was a lot of damage though. Um, the the photosynthesis, so photosynthesis in the leaves were, were clearly affected, and here's another place where I think uh, water management could have could have helped. So a little bit extra water may have not saved the fruit, but it may have saved the leaves in, in many cases because the leaves would be able to, co to cool themselves better. So photosynthesis is affected. Um, as I mentioned, there's two photosynthesis. I didn't mention, but there are two photosynthesis photosystems you probably have studied before. Um, I read that photosystem one is is heat stable, uh, much higher than photosystem two which is sensitive to over 105 degrees, and these leaves clearly, clearly experienced over 105 degrees. In these cases, the, the, the enzymes are denatured in, in, the, um, in the leaves, and it's not always reversible. In this case, I think a lot of leaves were damaged beyond repair. Uh, I think this was expressed more in leaves that ha in vines that had red blotch, and I think if vines that had red blotch were really, really impacted uh, because you had really, okay, um, you, you really had two things on top of each other. Um, Berries themselves can be can be uh, affected negatively. You can denature the enzymes in, in berries. I had the feeling that, except for the ones that were obviously shriveled, um, that it may be more of an issue with with the leaf scorching and with leaf damage than than the berry damage. But I think there was definitely some berry damage. So berries are damaged like over 100 degrees. They start exhibiting heat shock proteins. Over 105 degrees, they start denaturing proteins as well. Um, and so that can be very damaging. Uh, I got a couple of quick slides here. I don't want to go into a lot of detail, but I, I asked a, a friend of mine or a colleague or a client actually to give me some curves of their bricks. I don't know these vineyards. Um, these are the, the, the Appalachian and the variety. So we have Green Valley, we have Russian River, we have Dry Creek, um, we have Alexander Valley, and then we have Pinot Noir, Zinfandel, uh, Syrah is not in here, uh, Petit Syrah, and Malbec and Cabernet Sauvignon and Grenache are all in here. But um, some of them, they behave differently, okay? If you look at the two Pinot Noir graphs, this is that red one here, you see it did, at the, the heat, heat occurred around here, you see it did flatten out, stop accumulating sugar, or it stopped, um, the bricks stopped increasing. And the same thing kind of happened out here with this other uh, Russian River Pinot Noir vineyard. But some of the, some of the uh, vineyards did continue to increase in bricks. The thing is that's not that clear here is that, and I know the next talk is going to be on sugar loading, which is going to be much more interesting than this. Um, uh, I like to look at this. I like to look at this. Is the t this is titrated. Don't look. I don't get too much. This is all kind of messed up. But um, I don't want you to study these. But I'm looking at where the TA titratable acidity stops, and I'm looking at where the pH stops. And and this is my final slide. Okay. Um, this is all the vineyards. This is when this is when I uh, the TA stopped uh, stopped dropping. This is where the PA, when the pH started stopped um, increasing, and this is when it was approximately harvested. I don't know when they were exactly harvested. I'm, I'm basing this on on the, sh on the sampling. Um, some of these were harvested well after the the why I call it a metabolic metabolic stop when the when the acidity stops. Uh, uh, declining. That's when I consider the berry to stop metabolizing. Some of these were, were harvested well after that, meaning I think that was harvested based on uh, uh, on shrivel. So I think the bricks accumulated based on shrivel in these particular cases. Some of them stopped fairly close to to um, when the metabolic pathway. And that, that happens to be, I believe, oh, this is a Zinfandel. We're, we're not harvested far away from when the the metabolic berry metabolism stopped. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, this is AVA, this is variety, this is bricks per week, this is the uh, uh, bricks per week, and you see that some of them were, were fairly high and some of them were fairly low. And so there's a big difference in across, across the county on how these, this, this all performed. Uh, this is when the TA decline ceased, 
This is when the pH rise ceased. So this is kind of the criteria I'm using to uh, show when the berry metabolism stopped. And this is the approximate date of harvest. And this is the spelled wrong metabolic stop. The days after it was harvested after the metabolic stop. Um, sorry, the, it shows better on here. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it. I, I, I don't have a lot of time. Here's my, I don't have any time. I think we, we, could, we could learn from our fruit exposure. I think we could learn from a little bit by irrigating a little bit extra, which is, hurts me to say, but I think we can. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as detrimental. I think we still want to get our, our, our water stress dialed in prior to Verizon, not after. Uh, less, it's less important then, and I think we need to protect our fruit. Um, and that's pretty much what I, all I have to say. Thank you so much. Thank you.